All right. So welcome to yoga. Why don't you find yourself a seat and a comfortable surface for sitting on. So it might be using a blanket underneath your hips. Um, you might sit on the floor or if you want to sit in a chair and that feels a little bit more comfortable at first, you can do that too. You can switch your legs if you're sitting in a cross-legged position so that that non-dominant leg is in front or on top. Just making sure that you've got the comfort that you need to sit well. And then maybe closing the eyes if that feels okay or it's such a beautiful day if you want to gaze off into the blue sky or the green trees. And then just taking your shoulders up, around, and back. You might tilt yourself forward if you're sitting right onto the front of your sits bones so that you can sit up nice and tall, untucking your low back. And then just putting one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly. And just taking a moment just to notice. So maybe noticing any sensations in the torso. Notice where your mind is drawn, your awareness. And there's nothing to change. Right now we're just in this place of noticing, this place of witnessing. Good, so noticing the sensations in your hands, Sensations under your hands, a feeling of contact. And then just the rhythm of the breath. So noticing your breath. You might feel the movement of the hands with the breath. And once again, you don't have to change anything right now. Just notice the rhythm of your breath. Good. Sometimes we slow down long enough and just start to notice the breath. We might notice a yawn or a sigh come in. Yeah, the body's like, I'm just gonna catch up right now, now that I get a chance to actually think about breathing. I'm gonna get what I need. So getting that extra breath as needed. And then just taking your breath right into that hand on your belly, feeling your belly rise and expand with the breath in. And then as you exhale, you feel the belly draw back towards your spine. Good, let's add on a little bit. So when you breathe in, first breathing into the hand on the belly and then breathing into the hand on the heart expanding all the way up and under the collarbones, and then reversing as you exhale. So letting the collarbones soften back, letting your hand on your heart soften back, let your belly soften back to your spine. At first you might not get it, it's okay, just try and try again. So taking a breath in, feeling the belly fill, feeling the heart open, feeling the collarbones lift, and then as you exhale, reverse, like you're draining out from the top of the lungs, all the way down to the lower lobes, all the way down to the belly. Good, so rolling the breath through from the bottom to the top as you inhale and from the top all the way back down to an empty bottom as you exhale. Perhaps just a couple more breaths like that. 
filling all the way up from the bottom to the top. Draining out as if you pulled the plug at the bottom. Circling out all the way down to the bottom. One more breath like that from the belly all the way up. And then from the shoulders all the way down. And then just let your breath slip back into its natural rhythm. Maybe getting curious and noticing if it's the same or if it's different from when we started. And then just taking your hands, both of your hands to your heart. And just for a moment, just open up to whatever it is that's in your heart right now. So something calling, something speaking, an intention, a question, discomfort, longing, some emotion, some story, whatever it is that's in that heart right now, just greet it. Good. Let it be part of your practice as you press your hands in. Good. And then letting the arms just come down by the side. You can keep your eyes closed or you can open your eyes if you need to. But as you take a breath in, do that three-parted breath again from the belly all the way up as you lift your arms up overhead. Right, so last little bit up into the collarbones as you reach through the fingertips. And then as you exhale, soften the collarbones back in and down, heart back, belly back, hands down. And then just like that again, breath by breath, inhale to lift the arms up, filling the lungs and then exhale to set it down. And if your mind gets really busy and starts to wander, just bring it right back to the sensation of breath and movement. Good, taking a breath in, lifting the arms up overhead. You can interlace your fingers right over the top of the head and then just press the palms up towards the sky. Good, when you take an exhale, you can bend your elbows. Let your hands come right back behind your head. Broaden out those wings, so reach the elbows out to the sides and take another breath in. As you exhale, tip over to the right side, release that right hand down to the floor and then reach up through your left elbow. Good, and then you can take a breath in, come back up, right hand behind the head. As you exhale, let that left hand drop as you stretch over to the left. And then just like that, breath by breath, moving back and forth. And then just evening yourself out. So last place you wanna go is towards the left side. And then we're gonna come back up through the center, no rush, but coming back up through the center, hands behind the head again, elbows out wide. You might wanna take another breath in just to lengthen out your spine. This time as you exhale, tip yourself over to the right side, but you're gonna keep your hands behind your head. Elbows open wide. All right, now imagine you're like a little bit of a spigot here. You're gonna turn your heart towards the ceiling, towards the sky, towards whatever's up there. Good, keep breathing. Yeah, take a breath in and come right back up through center. 
And then as you exhale, tilt over to the left side. And again, just imagine you're gonna turn yourself like a spigot, heart towards the sky. Elbows are wide and open, even though they're gonna to wanna to shut down and pull in towards the middle. Keep pressing them open. Good, take a breath in and come right back up through center. You can reach your hands up over the top of your head. As you exhale, you can take your arms down right in front of you as you round your back, drop your chin to your chest and tuck your tail under. As you inhale, lift your arms up as you press your heart forward, a little bit of a back bend. Exhale, round and inhale, lift. Just like that, breath by breath. Good, take a breath in and next time you reach your arms up, lengthening out the spine. As you exhale, you can sweep your arms down and come right back behind you so you can interlace your fingers back there. Once you interlace your fingers behind you, you can stretch your arms up. Some of us are really tight in the shoulders, right? So the elbows are gonna stay bent, that's okay. If you're gonna be there, just keep pressing the shoulder blades down the back, shoulders down away from the ears. If you can press your arms towards straight, great. Work at that, pressing the hands away from the shoulders. You can feel the opening starting right at the heart, right? Moving out across the shoulders. And if the arms are all the way straight, then maybe you wanna lift your hands up and away from your low back. So none of those is right or wrong. It's just finding the place that you can still breathe, you can still focus, you can stay with it. Take a breath in, and then as you exhale, release. Taking the hands just right onto the legs, giving yourself a moment just to pause and notice. Good. If your eyes are closed, you might want to drop your chin to your chest and just blink your eyes open, and then lick your head. Lick your head. <laughs> Lift your hand back up on top of your spine. And then coming onto your mat, if you're not there already, I'm not there already, onto your hands and your knees. Oh, you need to move. All right, so hands and knees, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Stretch your feet back from your knees. So you might want to look back there. Um, I feel like we're all kind of always going towards child's pose. So a lot of times I'll find that I have my toes tucked in towards the middle already. So just straightening out the uh, lower parts of your legs, taking a breath in here. And then pushing at the floor, exhale, round. Inhale, reverse, lifting the tail first. Drop your low belly, open the solar plexus, the heart draws forward. Nice long neck, exhale and round. So you really feel like you're opening up the front of the spine first and then the back of the spine. Good. And then with your next inhale, just come back to a neutral spine. You might want to take a little bit of a tuck of your tailbone if you're one of those people that really sway your low back like me. And then just taking a breath in, stretching your right arm up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, let your right hand land. And then as you inhale, lift your left arm up. And then exhale, let it land. So a little bit more about the neck here. As you inhale, lift that right arm up. Look at your right thumb and only go that far. Exhale, take it down. So you only go as far as you can still see your thumb as you lift your arm up. Just nice and slow and easy like that, breath by breath.
Good, and then evening yourself out. We're gonna go from here into a twist. So next time is you take that right arm up, just to get down and under your left arm, right shoulder and right cheek to the floor. And then stretching that left hand out in front of you. Good. Keep working that right arm through as much as you can, pulling that left shoulder over the top of the right shoulder. And then just pulling that left hand back, let your right hand come out so that you've got your hands under your shoulders once again, moving around a little bit, circling around or a few rounds of cat cow. Maybe you would just want to rest. So you might come down onto your forearms and take a rest. Good. So just listening in, choosing a path. And then when you're ready, we'll go with the other side of that twist. So take a breath in and lift the left arm up. And then as you exhale, thread it under your right arm, left shoulder and left cheek to the floor, right hand stretches forward. And if I keep feeding that left arm through a little bit more, I'll feel a little bit more rotation around my rib cage. Feel that right shoulder pulling back over the top of the left shoulder. And then just pulling that right hand back, left hand pulls out, hands right underneath your shoulders. Again, let's take ourselves to downward dog. So just walk your hands in front of your shoulders, turn your toes to the ground, lift your knees up and press your belly back towards your thighs, keeping your hips going up nice and high, keeping your knees as bent as you need them to be. So start to just to take the weight out of your arms and into your legs. And then once you've got that position started out, then maybe just start to stretch one leg at a time. Bicycling back and forth. Good. Lots of breath and just staying right here, right now. Good, and then maybe coming up onto your tiptoes, stretching your heels down as you press your hips up. Taking just a couple of breaths here. Good, and if you need to take a break, you can always come down onto your hands and knees or come to child's pose as needed. Step your hands back, just one hand length closer to your feet. So you maybe get the heels a little bit closer to the ground here. And then take your left hand across the midline and reach for the outside of your right ankle. So looking underneath that right armpit. And again, if it's too much, you want to take a break, no worries. Take a break, try again. Good, take a breath. And then as you exhale, return that left hand next to the right hand. Take the right hand across the midline to the outside of your left ankle. Use that hand to pull yourself through and under that left armpit.
Beautiful. Exhale, release. Right hand comes back next to the left hand. Come down to hands and knees and just take yourself a break here, maybe on the forearms, letting the head drop down. Maybe you want to take to child's pose, letting the hips settle back to the heels. Good. Find your breath. Notice the effects of the pose. And then when you're ready, come up from, or from wherever you're at, come up and then take your knees in towards each other. So we're gonna take a child's pose. If child's pose is too much for you, it's okay to stay forward in polar bear instead. But if you can, take your knees together, let the tops of the feet press down into the floor, sit yourself back onto your heels, and then take your arms along your side. So really traditional child's pose here. Belly comes down onto the thighs, head might come to the floor, the floor, or you might have a block underneath your forehead. And then once you're in that position, we don't take this very often anymore, so feeling that sense of um, compression on the belly, remembering that three-parted breath, so the breath that starts right down at the bottom and moves up, can you see that same wave happening in the back of your body? So can you imagine breathing right into the kidneys and then up into the backs of the ribs, all the way up into your shoulder blades, and then exhaling, feeling the shoulder blades soften in, that low back deflate, tailbone hang down. Good, so trying that breath just a few times. And then if you can, from this position, reach your hands all the way back so that you can hold on to your heels. If you can't, that's okay. You can just keep your arms where they are. We're gonna lift the hips up away from the floor and come on to either the forehead, you might roll all the way to the top of the head as you lift your hips. So stretch here is in the upper back and through the neck. Good. Take a breath in here, and then as you exhale, let the hips settle back down. Go wide with your knees, either polar bear or coming back through child's pose. I'm happy now with a little bit more appreciation for the back body as you breathe. So maybe feeling both the front and the back breathe as you fill. So filling that belly, kidney region, and then up full 360 degrees of the ribs all the way up into the shoulders exhaling all the way down the full volume of your torso so try that a few times And then just coming back up to hands and knees, bring yourself back up and through downward dog, stretch out the legs. <sighs> Find your breath again, rooting down into the fingertips, rolling in towards your thumbs. Good. Step your left foot right to the center of your mat and then stretch your right leg up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, bend that right knee, spin to look under your right armpit again, as you get into that right hip. Good. 
And we're gonna go from here to pigeon pose. So stretch that right leg up. You might wanna look around and see where your blanket is. And then take that right knee forward behind your right wrist. And you're gonna scooch that right foot out towards the left side, keeping a flex in your right foot. Slide that left leg back as you sit down into your hips. You might be able to put a blanket or a yep, pillow underneath your hip if you need that extra support. So just filling this space. Remember, summertime is a good time to sort of challenge yourself by taking the props out. So if you want to hang out into that hip and feel the intensity, the heat is there for you to do that. So hands go right underneath the shoulders. We'll take a breath in and lift. And then as you exhale, turn to look across your right shoulder. Good. Let yourself rotate, pulling back through the right hip and forward through the left hip. Good. Keep saturating yourself with breath all the way through the intensity. Yeah, take a breath in and come right back up through center. And then as you exhale, you can bring yourself into a forward fold to whatever that looks like for you today. It might be down right here on your forearms. You might bend your elbows, let your head rest in your palms. You might take yourself all the way down onto stacked arms or even all the way down to the floor. And again, none of those is right or wrong. It's just about where's, where's the best spot for me? And the best spot for you during the warm days might be a different spot than you go to in the cold days, and that's okay. It's perfectly understandable in the weather. Good. Again, feel ourselves a little bit more open, a little bit less contracted as it warms up. Maybe like those flowers opening up, broadening out, daring. Good. So dare yourself to come into that intensity in the hip. Keep breathing. And just a couple more breaths like that. Maybe softening the shoulders and the jaw here. And then with that third inhale, you can let your hands come right under your shoulders again as you slowly lift yourself up. You can pull that left leg in and then stretch the right leg <laughs> come into downward dog again. <sighs> Good. Noticing differences in the body from right to left. Difference in sensation, the way the blood is flowing, openness, tightness, all that good stuff. And then you can step your right foot to the inside or the center of your mat. You can take a breath in and stretch your left leg up. And then as you exhale, bend that left knee, spin to look under your left armpit. Good, we're a little inverted here, so nice, strong breath. All right, take a breath in, stretch that left leg up, and then as you exhale, come forward, left knee behind your left wrist. You can take your left foot out towards the right side, and then just slowly slide that right leg back as you sit back into your hips, so both hips. Left foot's gonna stay flexed just to make sure that that left knee doesn't rotate. And then letting the hand just settle underneath the shoulders. You can take a little bit of padding underneath that left hip if you need it, or you can try hanging out into that stretch. Again, if you're holding your breath the whole time, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe you just need that support today, right? But the summer is a good time to try to just uh, use this heat that's outside of your body to stretch a little bit more. All right, so taking a breath in here, 
We'll start out by rotating to look across that left shoulder. In the sense of steering the hips towards the short end of the mat. Good, then taking a breath in, coming right back up through center. And then again, going right into that forward fold. So whatever that's gonna feel like for you on this side, checking in. Maybe you can mirror what you did on the other side. That's ideal, but if you can't, that's okay too. Get curious about those imbalances. So if it feels a little bit more intense to go down on this side or the other side, in your own personal practice, you might choose the tight side to start with move over to the other side that's more open, and then come back to the initial side. Maybe double up on that side that's really tight. And then noticing if tension starts to refer into the jaw or the shoulders. Being really curious about that. And again, maybe just a couple more breaths like that. And then when you're ready, letting your hands come underneath your shoulders, take a breath in to sit all the way back up again. And then just coming back to sit onto that left hip. You could take a blanket underneath your hips if you need to at this point, stretching out through your right leg. So you're sitting back onto your hips. You can just face towards the long end of your mat. Keep that left foot tucked in towards your hips. Good, extra height underneath the buns if you need it. Good, and then once you've got yourself settled here, flexing that right foot, turning yourself towards your right foot, so heart around towards the toes, hands to the top of the thigh, taking a breath in. Exhale, slide your hands down your leg as you bow forward towards your right foot. And then as you inhale, lift back up again. Exhaling forward. This is a good one for kind of getting rid of the swelling in the legs. If you've been doing a lot of yard work or you've been riding your bike a lot or whatever you've been doing outside. So just like that, breath by breath. Good, take a breath in and sit back up tall. Let your right hand come to the inside of your right leg and then just slide that right hand out towards your arch. Let your left hand come onto your heart and just take a breath in here, lengthen your spine. And then as you exhale, twist, twist away from your right leg. So look across your left shoulder. You might keep your hand on your heart or you might stretch your left arm out. Good, that usually feels really good across the chest so you can feel from that right pec stretching out across your right shoulder or left shoulder. I'm getting a little bit more space at the front of the shoulder. Good, and then just flipping that left palm towards the sky. Take a breath in, sweep that left arm up and over. And then as you exhale, stretch your left fingers for your right toes. 
So another possibility is here, maybe this right arm is just staying where it is. Maybe you can tuck that right elbow to the inside of the right knee to give yourself a little bit more leverage to turn. And then take a breath in, stretch that left arm up, around and back. Letting your left hand come and land behind your left hip. Let this right hand sweep along the floor in front of you as you lift your hips up and stretch your right arm back. So as you exhale, you let your hips come back down, sweep the right hand on the floor. Inhale, lift up. Big circle with that right arm. So really getting some more space again into the right shoulder into the right side of the chest. Good, and then one more time, reaching up and back through that right arm. Stay here, breathe. Good. Take a breath in, reach. Wide and open, and then exhale, let yourself back down to the earth. You can take your right foot in to meet your left foot. Soles of the feet together into Baddha Konasana. So again, this might be a good time to get that blanket under your hips if you don't have one already. In a moment, just to open the heart, lift the crown of the head. You feel that sense of symmetry as you press your feet into each other. And then we'll go to the other side. So letting your right foot come in towards the hips, letting your left leg stretch out to the side. You might wanna lean forward a little bit so that you're on the top of your sits bones. Take a good strong flex in that left foot and then turn yourself towards your left toes, right? So really twisting towards those left toes. Hands to the top of the thigh, taking a breath in here. Ground that thigh bone. As you exhale, hinge yourself forward, heart towards the toes as you slide the hands along the leg, and then inhaling back up again. Take it nice and slow again, as if you could need some of that uh, swelling, fluid retention out of the legs. Good. Maybe one more time like that. And then as you take a breath in and you sit up again, you can take your left hand to the inside of your left thigh, slide it out right towards the arch of your foot, and then just take your right hand onto your heart. So when we do this, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll find ourselves kind of curling forward. Instead, puff out your heart, lengthen your spine, and then use an exhale to twist away from your left leg. Hand might stay on the heart, or you might stretch that wing out. Gonna keep breathing nice and long as you breathe into your fingertips. Exhale, take it a little bit taller with your spine, right? You could feel a little bit more length there with that release. Good. Right, so we're really starting to get that left side of the rib cage lined up with the left leg. Beautiful, because we're gonna take it to a Fold over to the side, so taking a breath in, reaching that right arm up and over. Exhale, right fingers reach for the left toes. And maybe this is where you're at, or you might tuck that left elbow to the inside of the left knee. Use it for a little bit of extra spin in your stretch.
And good, take a breath in, lift that right arm up and down. Let your right hand land behind your right hip. We're gonna do that fancy dance here. So taking the left hand along the floor as you drop back into your right hand, lift your hips up and stretch your left arm back. Exhale, circle that left arm down. Inhale, lifting up. <laughs> Just like that breath by breath. Just one more time like that. Next time as you reach up and back with that left arm, you can stay, really puff out the ribs, stretch out the front of your body. With an exhale, you can lower yourself back down to the ground. Take your feet back in towards the center and pause. Give yourself a moment just to breathe. Good. And then when you're ready, we're going to make our way down to the ground. If you have one close by, grab a strap, preferably a strap, an eight foot or longer strap. Um, if you don't have a strap, then maybe a, a longer scarf or a towel might work. If it can be something that you can make into a loop, that would be... <laughs> Sorry, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> make it into a loop, that would be the best. So if you have a strap and you haven't looped it or you haven't um, connected it yet, do that. Make sure it doesn't slide. And then just coming down <laughs> to your back on the floor, you make sure you've got your blanket close by if you want to be covered with that later and anything else that you might need for comfort. Uh-oh. And as you come down onto your back, just taking your strap right to the base of the right toes. And then just lifting that right heel up. You can figure out where the start of your stretch is. So if your hips are up off of the floor, it's a pretty good chance that you're a little bit too much into that stretch. So ease off a little bit. Take it back to that point where you can feel the low back still resting on the floor. You're really gonna isolate that right leg moving, and that's it. And then just taking a breath in, reaching through your right heel. And then as you exhale, start to bring your foot into that stretch, just a little bit at a time. And some people feel comfortable with that other leg staying bent. Some people feel okay with stretching it out long. Either way is okay. Now I'm going to keep a hold of this strap with my right hand and I'm going to let my left hand just come down to press into my left hip. So keeping my hip squared towards the ceiling. You can take a breath in here and then as I exhale I can let that right leg fall out to the right side. Right? So shoulders and hips still squared towards the ceiling. Good. When you take a breath in, you can take your heel back up through the center. If your left leg is not stretched out yet, do that and then transfer your strap into your left hand. Keep going over the midline of the body and let your leg drop over to the left side now. So the change that we're going to make here is we're going to square our shoulders as much as we can towards the sky and then maybe stretch that right arm out to the right side. And then maybe even turn your head to look towards your right hand. You don't have to do either of those things, but if it feels okay and sustainable, maybe breathe into it. Good. 
Again, strong breath in, take your gaze and your heel back up through the center. You can rebend that left knee if you like, and then take the opposite end of your strap. So find your loop. You're gonna put that loop right behind your head. So if you have a, a loop of a towel or a loop of a scarf, that would be great. Even if you tie a knot in your scarf, that could be useful. Once you've got it placed in the good spot right above your ears, you should be able to let go of your arms. Let your arms go out to the sides. If your neck is kind of chronically tense and your shoulders, you might want to readjust the shoulder blades down the back some, or maybe swing your head gently from side to side. Notice if you're favoring one side or the other. See if you can relax your head right in the midline. I'm just noticing if there's any way that you're holding back or holding on here. Peering into any resistance. Ask yourself if you could let go just a little bit more. I think like it's just a couple more breaths. Remember, sometimes it's letting go in our body, sometimes it's in our mind. Letting go of control, letting go of organizing everything, holding everything together. And then just taking your hands on either side of your strap, you can press up through your right foot if you want to traction your neck out a little bit. And then easing off a little bit, right knee bends, you can take your strap off of the back of your head, let your head come back down to the floor. Just set, that, set that right foot next to the left foot for a second and just let your knees kind of sway from side to side. Again, that's a good way to just kind of take in information and notice any differences from side to side. And a lot of concentrated work on that right side. And then as you come right back through the center, taking your strap this time to the base of the left toes, starting out just with that hamstring stretch. So reaching up through your left heel, maybe finding a place where the stretch is not quite so hot, move off of it a little bit, let your bun settle down to the ground, let your hips stay grounded. All right, so you stretch really into the back of the left leg and that's all. And then just taking a strong breath right up into the left heel. And then as you exhale, coming into a little bit of a stretch, just a little bit with each breath out. You might keep that right knee bent or you might stretch your right leg out. Now that the back of the leg is stretched, so let's take that strap into the left hand. Let your right hand land and anchor that right hip to the ground. With an exhale, you can let your leg fall over to the left side. Again, hips and sh uh, shoulders stay squared towards the ceiling, really concentrating on the inside of that left thigh. Noticing any stories that come up here as you stretch the inner thigh. Right? Lots of stories in there usually. Okay, 
Just remember, it's okay to come out of any pose at any time for any reason. And then just taking a breath in, take your heel back up through the center. If you haven't already, stretch that right leg out. We're going to transfer the strap to the right hand and then keep going all the way across the midline of the body. <clears throat> you can feel that twist come in, right? So lower body is twisting in one direction. We're going to press the shoulders down towards the ground, especially the back of that left shoulder. Maybe reach that left arm out to the side. Maybe if you feel through the twist from the base of your spine all the way up, does it feel like you're continuing that by turning your head to the left? If it feels like you're not, that's totally different, then keep your gaze towards the ceiling. And then a strong breath just to take your heel and your gaze back up to the center. You might want to re-bend that right leg. Take your strap right to the back of your head again. You might notice a difference here, so you might need the strap to be a little bit looser, a little bit tighter. With this stretch too, you could keep that right leg bent or you could stretch your right leg out. You can let your hands go onto your belly. You might stretch your arms out to the sides. If you roll the palms up towards the sky, then you'll be able to feel those shoulder blades soften down the back. So. And then again, if your neck is kind of chronically tense, especially one side or the other, you might want to move the head a little bit from side to side. See if you can find the midpoints. So just making sure we're not exaggerating those tension patterns. Good. The beauty of Hatha Yoga is that we're going in the door of the body, right? So as in the body, so in the mind. So as you start to feel any resistance build up, whether it's mental, physical, emotional, just getting curious. Curious about how much more you can let go or release here. So weight of the head, maybe softening the face. Couple more breaths here. <laughs> and then when you're ready, take your hands either side of the strap. You can push up through that left foot to traction your neck out a little bit. And then you can release your strap from the back of your head. Head comes right back down to the earth. Left foot can come back down next to the right foot. You maybe want to swing the knees a little bit from side to side and check that out. And then you can just, from this position, check in with your body to see, is there anything else that my body might be asking for, right? So any extra stretches, you might wanna release your low back a little bit, maybe take a bridge pose or happy baby. So just listening in to see what feels like balance here. Okay. Remember, it's sometimes is the best balance is just to head right into Shavasana. Right? And sometimes the best balance is just to challenge yourself to continue your practice pose by pose.
And then as you're ready, if you haven't already, you can take yourself to a position for relaxation and integration. Sign out of here. And so extra propping, maybe a bolster underneath your knees. You might want to cover yourself with a blanket or take a pillow underneath your head. If you do take a pillow underneath your head, just make sure that it's supporting um, a neutral spine, so not too much underneath the head, not too much of a lift up. Maybe stretching out is another beautiful thing of this season is maybe just to go a little bit wider than you usually would with your arms or let your legs go right out to the edges of your mat like a starfish. But expand a little bit beyond your comfort. That's a way that you normally do things. Good. And then maybe closing the eyes, or again, you might just let your gaze be soft. I'm just taking a nice big full breath in from the belly, rising up into the heart, all the way up into the collarbones. And then as you exhale, feel that softening wave from the collarbones down through the heart and down through the belly. Take a couple more breaths like that. Just really activate your breath. Good. Taking the breath in service of release. And with that third exhale, just exhaling all the way down to the belly. Maybe let that exhale continue all the way down the length of your legs, all the way to the tips of your toes. Good. So letting those inhales be nice and nourishing. Letting the exhales be long and long and longer. Just letting your head get heavy. Let the eyes sink back into the sockets. And then you might feel the softening across the eyebrows and then through the temples and over the cheeks. You might feel the forehead smoothing out and your jaw releasing. When your jaw releases, maybe the lips are just gently touching, but you might feel your teeth part. And feel some space in the mouth so that the tongue can drop down and relax. Let go of the muscle of the tongue all the way down to the root. Good, and every exhale is a chance to let go a little bit more. Letting go of the tension in the body, letting the shoulders soften down. Feeling a sense of comfort and ease move down the shoulders, and down the arms, all the way down to your hands and right to the tips of your fingers. Good, and you can feel your spine supported now by the floor or the props or the earth. And just softening down the length of your spine. So noticing the muscles across the upper back and under the shoulder blades and those muscles that run right along the sides of the spine. They're just kind of loosening their grip as they soften. <laughs> then just letting your hips settle Softening right into the hip sockets. Sending that sense of comfort and ease right down the length of your legs, down to your feet, all the way down to the tips of the toes. Okay. It's okay to just let yourself breathe.
So now almost as if the universe is breathing you. Belly soft, heart open. Good, feel the boundary of your skin. So you might feel the air against your skin, the pressure between your body and the mat or the floor, or the earth. Feel the whole boundary of your skin. Texture of the clothing against your skin, your hair. Feel the boundary of the skin. And then just imagine it starting to dissolve. Softening, softening. Feeling a sense of unity and expansion. Letting yourself fold into the all. It's okay to rest right there. So finding again the boundary of your skin. You might notice the air moving across your skin, the texture, what your skin is touching, your clothing, the floor. And feel the whole expanse of the skin and then noticing inside the skin. Here you are. I am the wave and I'm the ocean. So you feel yourself connected, wide, expansive, and then also coming back into this discrete body, at least physically. So feeling yourself in your physical body, you might wanna stretch and expand a little bit by reaching out wider with your hands or taking your arms up overhead, stretching from your fingers to your toes, whatever feels right to start to come back kind of a full body yawn and stretch. You might gather your knees in towards your belly, maybe give yourself a rock from side to side, wake up your low back. You can rock yourself off to the side when you're ready. And then just use a strong hand to press to a seated position. As you come back up to that seated position, you can keep your eyes closed or you can gaze off into the distance. You might take your hands 
back onto your belly, your heart. Once again, taking stock, noticing sensations here. Anything might still be going on in the body. Notice, 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 keep noticing. Good. And then you can take both of your hands to your heart. I'm gonna finish with reading a poem from Thich Nhat Hanh. It's called Interrelationship. You are me and I am you. Isn't it obvious that we inter are? You cultivate the flower in yourself so that I will be beautiful. I transform the garbage in myself so that you will not have to suffer. I support you, you support me. I am in this world to offer you peace. You are in this world to bring me joy. So as we complete our practice, just remember that we have our practice, we have the space that we carve out for ourselves, and it's gonna free up energy, right? So it's gonna free up stuff that's blocked, things that are hidden underneath tension in the body or in the mind or in the heart. We have access to more energy when we move out of this practice space. And so then it's time to practice what's called seva, service, right? So use that energy in the service of this world. It needs you right now. So what would it look like to take this energy off of your mat and into your life or your community? Just that next right step, what would that be? It can be small, it could be audacious, whatever it is, just noticing, marking that one step and then pressing your hands in towards your heart. And if your eyes are closed, you could drop your chin to your chest and then gently blink your eyes open. And then just lifting the head back up on top of the spine. Namaste. Thanks, Amy.